So in this video, it's about compression and how you maybe not need a compressor for something. And this video is not about saying my method is better than using a compressor. It's more like putting out knowledge that you can do things differently with different outcomes and with different uh, pros and cons. Um, just so you know, you can do things differently. And maybe sometimes it also helps for some new people to understand some uh, connections between things and why something is how it is. So maybe let's create a small little track or not a track, just, you know, a small pattern and maybe go to 120 BPM here and paint in some kick drums. Maybe put in here an EQ. Something like this, FX2, maybe cut out here some frequencies in the middle. So it's, this is, you know, not, not, not really important yet. It's just to demonstrate something. Bit of distortion for the overtones. Just to have a nice kick drum. Okay. Next track, we create just some color, uh, some, some kind of small bass. And here I just use one. Something like this, a G maybe. And pull this down. Then we use a repeater. Just a small bass sound here. Quantizer maybe. Okay. Okay. So the next step would probably be for you to bring in a compressor to duck the bass because of the kick drum, because we don't want to have, uh, or to want to free the space basically in the frequency spectrum. So we want to have the bass bass go away every time the kick drum plays. So what you usually do is you use a dynamics plug in here, some kind of compressor, and then you select as a sidechain input the kick drum. And then you fiddle around here with the, the threshold, the knee, the ratio. And then maybe you play around with the release time. So the release is up until the next kick drum comes in. So this is too fast. You can see we have here some space in there. And this is too too slow, so we never go back to the original volume. So we have to fill around with the release here a bit to get the right the right groove. And you can calculate this here, of course, with the, the you can calculate the milliseconds here with the BPM. And people do this with the calculator, maybe with some sheets, um, whatever. Or you can just dial it in by ear, which is most of the times what I do. So this is basically just, you know, a volume automation because we reduce the volume here um, every time a trigger com comes in. And usually you, you use some kind of detect algorithm here, a dynamics uh, detect algorithm. So every time um, a waveform or audio signal crosses a threshold, you act on it and you reduce the volume. How fast you can decide with the ratio, how fast you want to pull the volume down. You can change this with the ratio and um, you can change the threshold and you can change the attack and the release time. So how fast um, the volume goes up or down until or after the trigger. So there's a lot of knobs you have to play around with and it's, it's, it's pretty fine. It's what you people usually do for, for years. And um, compression was invented in, as, as far as I know, uh, for recordings, live recordings, where you have like a, a drummer playing drums and then you record it over the microphone. And the drummer is probably not really um, consistent in loudness levels, right? So sometimes the snare is loud, sometimes the snare is uh, too quiet. So you use a co compressor for that to 
um, even out the loudness. This is what the compressor are, was invented for. But we are working most of the times in the box. So when I play a kick drum here, the kick drum is always the same volume. So there's no fluctuation whatsoever. Maybe a little bit, but it, you know, it's not audible for the ears most of the times. So uh, the compressor is a bit overblown, <laughs> I would say, for that. Um, so most of the times people use the dynamics or compressor for having this pumping effect, right? To bring out the volume in between the, the kick drum. So here we use it just to pull down the volume of the bass sound. So there is space for the kick drum. So the bass and the kick doesn't interfere with, uh, with each other every, every time the kick drum plays. And um, we can replace this here easily with the tool device. And instead of using a sidechain, we use here, instead of using an audio sidechain, we can use here a note sidechain because we have the kick drum here already available as notes. So there's a note in here, right? So we can use this as an input. And every time the kick drum plays, we get this information here and then we pull down the volume. So it's the same effect. Every time the kick drum plays, we pull down the volume and we can change how with this envelope here. So we have direct access and we have direct control over everything. So the next step could be um, that we don't or we get rid of this side chain altogether because you have to wire it up. You have to select it here, maybe select the right um, channel for that. Maybe you don't want to do that because every time you do a track, it's house or techno and the pattern is always the same. The kick drum is always at the same position. So you can save a preset with the LFO on that. So we take here a classic LFO, for instance. And we can dial in here uh, synchronization for notes, use this mode, and then we disable bipolar option here. And then we can pull down the volume here exactly where the kick drum plays, because the kick drum always plays at the same position. And then we can change the shape of how the volume is released here with this small little uh, thing here. So it's kind of a ratio setting here, how fast the volume goes, goes back to the original position. We can also change here how much we want to reduce the volume. And because this is synchronized, if you change the tempo here, it's perfectly in sync. So you don't need to change anything. Um, so this is only yeah, useful if you have predictable kick drum patterns or patterns for your drums where you exactly know the kick drum is always playing at the same position. And there are some plugins, VSCs out there. LFO, I think, is by Xfair. And um, what's the other one? I think it's called Kick by Nick Romero. I, I'm not sure. There are a lot of uh, plugins out there that basically do the same thing because you know the, the kick drum pattern is predictable. And you can play around with this here and you can also save this as a preset and put it on your track and you don't, don't need to care for anything. The other benefit is that the release time here is perfect. So we get a perfectly, um, yeah, perfect shape for the release time because every time the next kick drum comes in, we have released the volume in time because it's an LFO, right? So. You don't need to fiddle around with the release time and uh, with the tech time and so on. So it's perfect, it's a perfect shape. Maybe it's too perfect for you, but it's a way of doing it. Okay, so this is something you can do. Then you can also use this tool device on, well, let's put this here into group, on the bus. So instead of using this here on the bass to duck the bass, we can also use this on the group where the kick and the bass place together. And here, most of the times, the compressor is used to glue everything together. This is YouTube speak. 
Uh, gluing something together is actually not only volume automation, but this is how people use it. Uh, it's also important that you match the frequencies of all these sounds to glue something together. So it's not about only volume automation, but that's how people use it. So here we can do two different thing things. Maybe you see an oscilloscope first. Just to play. Yeah, remove the modulation here first. So we can clearly see here yeah, we have a kick drum in there. And what you usually do with the compressor is, again, you pull down the threshold. Fiddle around with the ratio, which is the speed of how fast the volume gets reduced. And then find the right release time. Maybe switch off your makeup. And yeah, you reduce basically the volume of the kick drum here with the compressor. And then you use make up to bring up everything in volume afterwards with the same loudness as before. So you, you reduce the volume of the kick drums and then you bring everything up. So this is also something you can do with the tool device because we know exactly when the kick drum plays. It's predictable. So we can do this here to reduce the kick drum. it goes down this is before then we pull down the kick drum until we are happy with the the ratio between the bass and the kick okay and then we can change here the shape and then you pull everything up in volume So this is one way of doing it. You can also reverse the process. You can go here to a different, to a reversed or ramp waveform and um, leave everything as it is. And then increase the volume here. You can see every time the kick drum, kick drum plays, we stay at zero volume, so we don't change anything. And everything in between is getting increased in volume. So we bring basically up every, or we bring up everything in between the kick drums. So this is before, right? And this is after. So the kick drum stays the same. We only change everything in between the kick drums and we can change how here yeah, also with the uh, with this shape knob here or with the curve control. That is probably too much. So, and this is easily possible because the kick drum pattern is predictable. But if you do house and techno music, you know, every track is the same kick drum wise. So nothing really changes. So you can save this as a preset, pull it onto your track and then play around with all the knobs. And you have basically a perfect volume automation or compressor without playing around with release time and tech times because the LFO is always in sync. And um, yeah, we basically save the analyzing part and the analyzer takes some time, some latency. You need some latency compensation for that. Right, so everything is on point. So this is basically perfect. It's probably face perfect. I, I haven't tested this, but you can do if you want to. So um, this is something you can do. Um, some other things is you can also go a bit crazy with the grid if you want to, but this is a bit more work to set up, but you can also save this as a preset. So for instance, um, Let's say you are on the base, back on the base here. And we can use here an FX grid. In the FX grid, we can use a multiply. And the multiply changes the volume. So let's, let's say we have here one as an input. So this doesn't change anything in volume. Let's go for the base here. We have one in here. The volume is exactly or stays the same. 
we have zero here, volume is zero. So we can change the volume with this. So we take an AD device here, we switch off the pre chord here, and we can take a trigger with four notes. So every time the kick drum plays here, we get the trigger of the AD now. It's basically the same we did before with the LFO. So four notes every time we trigger this. And then we um, subtract this shape here. Let's go for an oscilloscope here first so we can see how it looks like. Slow. So we get the shape of the envelope in here, right? But we want to have actually the opposite. We want to, instead of increasing the volume or going up to one, we want to go down from one to zero every, every time this uh, envelope is triggered. So we subtract this from one. So we use a constant here. Um, then we take this. So now you can see we have basically the opposite signal. So every time we trigger this envelope, we have a zero and then we go slowly up back to one to the initial volume. So we can use this as an input. You can hear every time the kick turn plays, we go down, down in volume. And now you can also use the AD to shape yeah, basically the ratio, or maybe go to the relative here. Okay, so you can do this. So the benefit of this is you maybe have more control inside of the grid about when something gets triggered. Because you maybe have not a simple kick drum pattern, maybe you have here something like this. Right? And then you don't want to use a side chain for that, you can just use here a gates thing. We go up to eight. Here's a kick drum and here's a kick drum or here. Maybe I need more notes here, 16. So now you have basically the same pattern in here. But this is too complicated in my opinion here. It's better to just use an, a node trigger. But if you have predictable patterns like techno tracks or house tracks or whatever, then uh, maybe just putting an LFO onto a tool device, it's much simpler than pulling out the compressor, fiddling around release and the tech times, um, uh, you know, using a side chain setup and so on. So sometimes this is easier for me and it's also a nice way of looking at things that compressors are just, you know, volume automations uh, and nothing more. And if you say this compressor or that compressor has a different color or sounds better or whatever, most of the times in these plugins are just EQs in there at the end or maybe a bit of distortion or whatever algorithm they use to bring in a bit of overtones or harmonics. But really compressors are most of the times just volume automation. So inside of Bitwig, this is not a problem to modulate something. So use maybe a tool device with just an LFO on it, okay? I don't say it's better if you feel like your comp compressor sounds much, much better and it's easier to use than just use that. It's just any, and you know, I, I give options. I, I, I want to put some knowledge out there that you can do things um, in other ways. Okay. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.